Hi and welcome to the Monkey World 3D real-time terrain editing tutorial for the tool called Smooth. The Smooth tool is very different than some of the other tools we've discussed previously. In the current release it's called Paint, but will more than likely very soon change to the word Smooth. We're currently under the Terrain tab and we already have our Edit Terrain button set as well as the Edit Geometry radio dial. We're going to select Paint, but from here on out I'm going to refer to it as Smooth. The Smooth tool is different than the Flatten tool. Flatten, you'll remember, takes terrain, whether low or high, and forces it into what would appear to be almost a tin can slapped on your terrain. The Paint tool, the Smooth tool, takes geometry that is higher than the terrain on the low planes and smooths it down to that height. It's very similar to molding digital clay, kind of a, a way ZBrush modifies its geometry structure. We use the same radius sliders as well as the brush strength sliders to affect our terrain. I'm going to leave the radius very high. You can tell that in the middle of my terrain level there is some very high mountain hills that are very unrealistic and in my personal opinion don't really suit what I'm going for in my level. So I'm going to use the smooth tool to make these unapproachable mountains a very manageable and usable element within this level. Let's get started. Using the left mouse button will immediately cause this terrain to start to deform in a very believable fashion. Instead of it simply chopping the terrain down, it uses a method that I can only think of as either being digital clay molded down or a lava flow melting its, its substance lower and lower to the terrain but it has a strange effect as you click with the left mouse button you'll notice that right angles around bases of the mountain almost seem to have the erosion element slid down its face out into the terrain for example watch closely as I click this giant mountain in the middle is deformed down to a very manageable size and the geometry kind of spreads out over the terrain on the lower planes this is very different than the erase tool, the lower tool, in that it doesn't immediately chop it down low, but it kind of adjusts it in a very believable fashion. I'm going to go very quickly. You see this light aqua colored hill down here? We're going to zoom in on it, and I'm going to make a very simple adjustment to its base. Let me adjust my camera angle a little bit here. We're going to get very close to the bottom. You'll notice that it has a 90 degree angled base. This is very unrealistic for any geometric structure. So instead of having a flat cliff face, we're going to do a one single mouse click. Did you notice how it started to step the terrain out? It didn't do so as the flatten tool does, but instead caused it to form in a rather eroded and sloping pattern. The more I click, the more the terrain is modified and adjusted. And it does so in a very believable fashion. Controlling the radius and the strength controls how that terrain is deformed. This is a very easy way for adjusting walk paths through your, your hills. and it also allows you to very quickly adjust high mountain slopes to approachable hilltops. I think this tool is very awesome and uh, I think it can be very well used and utilized in upcoming releases of not only the Monkey World 3D level editor itself but also in the games that we create. There are a few bugs that you need to know about one of which is if I get too close to the sides over here and start clicking it locks up the 3D window. But if you're very careful, that option for a bug is unnecessary. And you can have a whole lot of fun. You can tell that we went from having almost a mile high mountain to something that is a very reasonable range. Having troops and elements walk up this slope is very believable and is a possibility now that we didn't have with the previous terrain unless we were creating a mountain climber game. I can't tell you how much I am impressed with this tool, especially with the way that it makes the bases of mountains and the sides and slopes a much more believable eroded pattern and fashion. 
I strongly encourage you to play around with this tool almost more so than I do the raise and lower functions and certainly more so than flatten. Use those original tools as the foundation and base for your terrain, but then spend a great deal of time with paint, learning how to sculpt and digitally mold that terrain into the way you want it to be. This is going to be very crucial for a later tutorial we're going to do on water, for we're going to create hill structures for that water to flow in between. Thanks for uh, listening to this tutorial. I hope you enjoy the smooth tool and uh, get used to it. It is incredibly powerful and amazing. To have it in a 2.0 release I think is a major milestone and I hope you enjoy it.